Welcome to Light Up A Life. We're so glad you were able to join us this year and we hope that the music and stories you're about to hear will be uplifting. One of the things we try and do at the Hospice of St Francis is to put ourselves in the place of those we're caring for, to see things through their eyes. One of the people who does this really well is Louise Mutter who works with our community nursing team. Louise's daughter Tilly is going to lead us now in our carol. I'm Tilly Mutter and today I'm going to be singing for you in the bleak midwinter um, for the Light Up A Life Festival for the Hospice of St Francis. I've lived in Hertfordshire for most of my life so uh, know the hospice quite well. My mum works as a palliative care nurse for the hospice and she does such an amazing job for that charity and the charity is amazing. So here you go, in the bleak midwinter. It's a privilege to work with families at the hospice through illness, death and bereavement. 
This is Susan's story. We completely and utterly believed that our parents were going to live well into their 90s. We, I mean, for me, she'd always been like super active, like she was up at six walking the dog. Yeah, and provided huge support in terms of childcare and everything for, for the boys. Mum had been having some sort of symptoms, you know, sort of tummy aches and things like that, but, you know, she wasn't a great fan of going to the doctor and they did a scan, so she told me. And uh, she said, um, so I don't, don't really want to say, you know, because it's not confirmed yet. And I said, no, just, please just tell me. And that's when she said, they think it's ovarian cancer. And I think that's when my mum really kind of broke. She was still having treatment. They were still trying to, you know, add some length to her life. And I mean, I remember going to see um, the doctor sort of a few days before and they said, you know, it's days. And my dad was with her at the end. And he, he wrote down her final words. Tell Martin and Susan I love them. Tell Isaac and Noah I love them. I love you and I'm not scared because you're here. And uh, yeah, she, she passed away on the 5th of September, 2017. But yeah, he was just completely devoted to her. He just loved her so much. And it was only really after she passed away that I realised just how much the Hospice of St Francis had, had done to make her last months, you know, make her feel human and make her feel like a person. It meant the absolute world to her. After my mum died, the Hospice offered the whole family bereavement support and the support provided to Noah and this is going to sound really dramatic, but I honestly think it changed his life. He still talks now about the lady he saw. I supported Noah for um, quite some time and got to know him well. He was um, a really engaging little boy who wanted to explore his emotions. He really, we worked very hard on emotions and um, he particularly enjoyed the fact that we would um, link colours to emotions. So when we were doing drawings and diagrams, you know, different colours, so red represented anger, you might have blue with sad, um, and then different emotions. And we did things like volcanoes with different colours coming out so that he could really see how he was feeling that day. And um, one time we made um, like a clay mountain range where you could have your, you know, your, your one way you're feeling a bit frustrated, your sadness, and it really gave you an image of how that sort of, you were feeling at that period of time. And then you'd, you'd put the clay together and you'd sort of put it into a ball and then rise, that was all part of how you were inside. And he loved doing those sort of tangible things like that. When we first came here, he said, Mum, this feels like a safe space. He's always said Caroline was the best. And that's the lady that you saw here. And uh, yeah, he, she just made such a huge difference. I think the pony days are just amazing. Oh, There's something about them, yeah. animals. One of our most popular events are our pony days. I particularly remember um, Noah when we was, uh, Caroline was supporting him and he was, it came to one of our events. Noah decorated his horseshoe and as he was leaving, he was trying to fit it on his foot um, and walk as a pony would down, down the corridor. And that's one of my memories of him. And I've remembered that when we were designing uh, this pod where we have some of our sessions and there's a link to Pony Day with horseshoes and we have a little trail outside of horseshoes and one hanging outside for luck so just a, a lovely memory of what Noah did with an activity that has had a bit of a legacy for our team. Dad did start to, to think about things that he, he you know um, wanted to do for himself he wanted to to continue living and, and having a purpose. He walked the which way, um, which still amazes me that he, you know he did that. But it meant a lot to him to be involved in raising money for the hospice because he recognised the impact they had on people's lives and he lived his life to make a difference to others and he did. Which is why when he passed away, it was the logical choice to ask for donations to the hospice in his memory, mm. um, which I, you know. Mm. I know he would have wanted more than 
nel pianos. This is our storyteller's chair. This is a really magical area and it's somewhere our children's services use a lot. We're so proud of everything they do and of all of our staff and volunteers. The Hospice of St Francis is a charity. So we really depend on our local community for fundraising, for donations, for legacies, to really help us bridge that cost so that we can deliver, continue to deliver our outstanding care to the community. It's lovely when people whose loved ones we've cared for continue to support us. We always feel that they're a very special part of our hospice family. One of those people is Fiona Dolman. She's been a wonderful support to the hospice and she's now going to lead us in a moment of remembrance and reflection. My father, Gordon Dolman, died at the hospice of St Francis, peacefully and surrounded by love. When I told my eight-year-old daughter that I wanted to say a few words about how St Francis had cared for her granddad, she said, they were our family and that's the best description that I can find. For the five years that St Francis cared for my dad and for all of us, their extraordinary empathy, their ability to see the world through our eyes, meant that they were part of our family. We would have been absolutely lost without them and we will be forever grateful for their gift of love. On the Death of the Beloved by John O'Donoghue. Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or night or pain can reach you. Your love was like the dawn brightening over our lives, awakening beneath the dark a further adventure of colour. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze quickened in the joy of its being. You placed smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart, and your mind always sparkled with wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake, complete. We looked towards each other no longer from the old distance of our names. Now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our best refinement. Let us not look for you only in memory, where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows and music echoes eternal tones. When orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. May you continue to inspire us, to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love, until we see your beautiful face again, in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our mind, and where we will never lose you again. This Christmas, may the flame of love burn bright in our hearts and in our communities. And may that love light up our lives, the lives of all those who we've loved who are no longer with us, and the lives of those who we would love to be with, but who we are unable to be close to this year. Happy Christmas. There are so many things that lift our spirits. One of those things is music. This year we asked the commercial music course at Tring Park if they would write a song for us. And out of all the songs that were written, this one felt right for Light of a Life. The tree is getting old of robins in her hair The birds are singing songs 
songs of hope and joy to make this world a better place. The golden sun shining in the blue brings light with his magic ray. We want you to know that whoever you are and whatever your connection with the Hospice of St Francis will be thinking of you. And for those of you who have had a particularly difficult year, we'll be thinking of you especially and hope for happier times ahead. So this Christmas, may you be given the gift of seeing the world through fresh eyes. May you find joy and wonder, love and peace. May you see others with compassion and be kind to yourself. And may the new year ahead bring light and hope with each fresh dawn. Amen. So from all of us here at the Hospice of St Francis, thank you so much for your support. It's a Merry Christmas from me. And it's a Merry Christmas from me. Wishing you health and happiness this Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for celebrating your loved ones with us this year. Thank you for all your support this year and from all of us at the Hospice of St Francis, a very Merry Christmas.